All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Live with Prima, May 2nd, 2013. I'm Carrie Fennell. I'm your host tonight. And normally I am on the chat and answering questions and talking about uh, food and snacks with you guys. <laughs> and pr everything Prima, of course. Uh, <laughs> you know, I think it's important to say the date and year now because I have so many people that look for the videos and um, sometimes it's easier. It's like they know it's like the last one I did or last one someone did. I don't know. I like to mention it. But anyway, uh, thank you for coming. Tonight we're going to make a really fun um, album. And um, the picture that I showed online is a little different than the one I have in front of me. And that's because I left my original, well, not my original, I left it in Canada with Emma. And I forgot. But I still have this one, which is my original one I made for CHA. So it's like a little flower pot album. And then uh, the inside, you open it up. And I've got all kinds of little pages inside and like, I customized um, these little inserts to fit inside the book because, as you know, it's kind of tall and narrow, and um, it's got you know it's but it's fun. It's really cute. And what I find is that this album is great to display in your home on your mantle, or um, it sits really well in like a little plate holder, you know, a little easel or something. And um, the one I'm going to be making tonight is basically going to look like this. Um, the flowers are going to vary a little bit. And I'm going to use a black ribbon around the bottom part instead of this red and white one because that's what I wanted to use. So it, it's nice and summery, you know, and, you know, my mom's upstairs. But I thought this would be a great little gift for her for Mother's Day. And I'm going to put um, pictures of the boys inside. And of me, of course. She, she likes to see pictures of me once in a while, mostly the boys. And um, give it to her so she can put it on display in her home. So when her friends come over, you know, it's kind of like um, a little brag book for mom. But this would also be a cute little gift for anyone you know that has like a green thumb or who, you know, just loves flowers or, you know, I don't know. It's just really sweet. It's a really sweet project. And I'm going to show you just how easy it is to put this together. Uh, sorry, I'm just, okay. My boss, she's texting me. She's just asking me um, how it's going. It's going well. So um, I wanted to show you a few things. And the main thing that I'm going to show you, Prima came out with this canvas coffee cup um, album. It's actually from our Donna Downey collection. And she's like a, a fanatic about coffee and Starbucks, especially. It kind of looks like Starbucks a little bit. And when you buy a pack or buy this album, you get five pieces in the pack. So I only need two. Um, there is a hole in one, but you know, I'm covering this up basically. And um, you know, using it for whatever I want. So you could actually technically get two, maybe two and a half albums out of one pack, which is really economical. Um, these um, albums are great because they're stitched all along the edge and they come with these cool little eyelets already in them in the front and the back cover. So for the inside pages, they have, wait, no, yeah, they come in all the pages. Yeah. So we're going to color those with some gelatos by Faber-Castell. And uh, we have a whole... Um, variety of things we're going to use. So I'm going to go ahead and pan down so that we can get it started and we can see all the loveliness that we're going to use. So bear with me for just a second because I don't have one of those fancy camera switches like they do at Prima now. Sorry, a little earthquake, a little earthquake action. There we go. I hope that looks good. Let me know, you guys. Sharon can tell me if it doesn't. <laughs> She'll remind me. So for the inside pages, you know, I used some of the Rosarian note cards. And what I did is I took out, you get 30 pieces in here. And there's a huge variety in the pack. So you can see that you get quite a few. And you get five of each design. So what I did is I took a couple of them. And I'm going to use these for inside pages. And I glued them back to back. So... 
Um, they're, I already prepared these for the show. So basically you're going to take two single pieces and the other side is blank. Sorry. Other side is blank. And I just sandwich them together and line them up. And it's a page for the inside of my book. Really easy. All right. So I'm going to put those in there. And I'm going to tell you about the products as I use them, if that's okay. So I can kind of get started. And, um, you know, I'll definitely tell you anything you need to know about whatever I'm using. It's quite the variety. And we're going to use uh, some Rosarian papers as well. And in one of our papers, we have all of these little note cards that you can cut out and use, you know, for journal spots and your um, layouts and for your books and for cards. I mean, it's really nice. And the other side is this gorgeous teal color with a sweet little border. There's also another paper from the Rosarian. Well, this one, what's this one called? Sorry. It's called Chambord. Chambord. Okay, Rosarian. And this one is called Bacella. And it's another cutout piece. And it's cool because it has little alphabet tabs you can cut out, more journal spots, and a funky polka dot design, which we're going to use. And the other side is just a, kind of a plain black. It's got like a very subtle kind of polka dot background. It's, I don't know if you guys can see it on the camera, but it's very, uh, very versatile. So you're going to need one of these, and you're going to need one of the Bacella, and two of the Chambord is what I use for this project. So two pieces of this paper here, and one piece here. All right, and I'm going to set these aside because what I'd like to do right now, off right off the bat, is get my canvas pieces colored. Now, um, I did grab some baby wipes at the store today, and i um, been meaning to get some anyway because they're nice and moist, and... What I'm going to do is use them to blend the gelatos. Gelatos are like a color stick. It's kind of, they're kind of waxy and um, almost like chapstick is the best way to, I don't know, describe it. And I use, I like to use like a variety of colors. And what's cool is that the gelatos come in a pack of um, four, I think four, and usually in a color family. And um, I got the big box with all of the colors because I love all the colors. So I'm going to be mixing and blending uh, red. This is called red cherry. This is called melon. Uh, this isn't called anything. It's just a pink. And this is like um, a skin color or kind of like a peachy pink color. I think it's one of the neutral tones. All right. So like I said, it's a color stick. And with these, I always start lightest and go to darkest and literally twist up the bottom and you can just start adding color just like drawing okay and the great thing is is that you don't have to go that crazy because it does not take a lot to kind of smooth out color all right so it's okay that I don't get in all the crevices quite yet because literally you're just going to bl start blending this color around and what's cool is the color combinations that you use are going to blend. Now if you don't have a baby wipe you can also mist it with water and you can get a little bottle of spray and then you can also just use your fingers to work it into the canvas. So right now it doesn't look like too too much. Let's see I'm going to grab another pink And what I think I'm going to do is just start with the darker colors, you're going to start shading in areas. So you don't have to cover the whole thing. Um, you just want to shade. And just start a little bit and work your way up. If you want a little more color, a little less, it's really easy to do. Because even if you add too dark of a color, you can always go back in with the lighter color and go over it again. So just to like lighten something up. See, that kind of calms the pink down a little bit when I go back in with that buttery um, nude, I guess you would call it. Okay, so it's looking pretty good. And that this is like so easy to do. You know, use the baby wipe, use your fingers, use a little sp spray of water. Easy. 
Now, I'm going to go in with this red, and the red I do not need to add a lot of because this a little bit of this red goes a long way. But I think that I like all of these light pink undertones, and uh, I can just keep shading and adding as I go. And again, I'm just using like a regular baby wipe. I don't know. Um, I try to go for like non-scented or you know, like the, the kind, it's very mild, um, but I feel like these, these work really well. It's really kind of coming together now. So do you see how I'm, I'm just kind of adding and shading and it's blending and I can really go even dark just around the edges just to bring that red in even more. Now it's already pretty wet from the baby wipe, so my fingers are working just fine. And this is also nice because that way you don't have to uh, oversaturate and wait, you know, a long time for it to dry or sit there with your heat gun and let it dry forever. All right, good. And with your fingers too, you, in the baby wipe, you can kind of push that color around as well. So do you see? It looks like um, kind of like a clay pot, so to speak. Nice blend. Thank you, Eileen. Eileen, there was somebody on the other day, and they it was their name was Eileen, and um, I said, "Hey, Eileen, I got my Sizzix dies." And, it, and then I realized it wasn't the same Eileen, and I was like, oh, I don't think you're the same Eileen. And she said, no, but I'm really happy for you. <laughs> Sometimes on the chat, I just get going, and I I just, I know some of you guys really well, and, you know, I could just start talking away and not even realize it's not the same person. <laughs> I do that to I do that to myself a lot. It's very embarrassing. Just ask my kids. Okay, so I'm gonna go in with this red. I love this red. It's so pretty and vibrant. And they keep coming out with um, new and different colors. Um, each release, so I find that I have to keep collecting the color, all the different colors, putting it into my stash. So now, you know, once this dries too, like right now it's kind of coming off on my on my fingers a little bit, but I'll tell you, once it dries, it, it's fine. It's totally set in, and uh, you don't need to worry because I know that the, that is a concern sometimes because it does. It comes off a little bit on your fingers, but don't worry. So I also want to tell you guys too, like on uh, if you ca in case you haven't heard on Saturday, um, we're going to be doing live with Prima classes all day long uh, for national or I you know sometimes we like to call it International Scrapbook Day. And uh, all the classes are free. Um, we have our wonderful instructors, uh, Sharon Lockenen is going to be on. We haven't had Sharon on in a little while. Uh, myself and Jamie and Drew and Frank. So it, it's, it's um, going to be a really fun. So if you're planning on cropping or, you know, hanging out with your friends and scrapbooking, you know, just join us and watch. And that way, um, you know, you can get some inspiration and just kind of see what we're doing. Um, everybody has some really fun techniques to share and some fun projects. So if you um, are curious about what we're doing, um, I posted an event on our Facebook fan page. Uh, if, you're, if you don't know where it is, it's Prima Marketing Flowers. And you'll see it right at the top. Drew and I have also been working on the new Live with Prima site. Uh, that's a kind of a, it's been a project we've been wanting to work on for a really long time. And we finally have been able to put
put some time into it to get it updated because I know I desperately needed it. And uh, he's been doing a great job working on it. Oh, my screen just went black, sorry. Ah, there we go. So I did put a link to the new site on there so you guys can kind of see it. It's not 100% finished, but it's looking really good. And um, he did manage to get all the classes uploaded there with all the products that we're using. So if you're interested in, um, you know, getting some of that stuff, then you'll know. Well, not interested in getting it, but you'll see what we used. It's pretty cool. Okay, so still blending away here. This is the fun part, though. This is... You can see I didn't even need to go back on it with my baby wipe. It's just automatically. And the more you do this, um, the more you're really going to start to like the blending that you do on your own and how it looks. And you're really going to, you know, kind of play with the shading. And I don't know. You could sit and do this forever, I think. Just keep experimenting and playing with the color. And that's what I love about it is it's it looks really kind of, you know, nice on the canvas. It works so well. Drew is amazing. He is. He's a good boy. He, he does everything. And, you know, he's going off to college this summer. So, you know, we were kind of talking about what, you know, what he's going to be doing. And I think he's still going to try to do his shows. And I was laughing because I'm like, well, are you going to take like all of your scrapbooking stuff to college with you <laughs> he's like oh yeah yeah definitely I was like oh, okay so as far as I know he's still planning to join us he doesn't want to give it up he would miss us all too much I think and he's been a very busy boy lately he was um he went to the prom last weekend and he's going again to another prom at a different school with another with a girl at her school this weekend so he's like you know He's the man right now. But he um, also, he, I don't know, he's going to school for fashion and design. Um, but he's really good at the websites and stuff. Like he did my blog, which has been terribly uh, ignored lately. Apologize for that. But um, he did. He revamped it for me and made it really pretty. So you can go and look at it and... And see what he did. He's just really cool at that stuff. He knows what he's doing. All right. Well, that's good. I feel like that that's really good. I'm going to show an up close picture. So get any color combinations that you like of the gelatos and, and start playing on canvas or on paper and cards and and you can see it like there's no rhyme or reason. I wasn't really kind of, you know, I was just kind of playing and adding color and blending and adding more color. So you can kind of see that it's really easy. You don't have to be careful with it, which is what I like. I'm just going to zap these dry for a second. They're really not that wet on the baby wipes. You'll also notice once you dry them, um, you'll really notice the contrast and shading even more so. I don't know how that happens, but it's it's magical. Yeah, you don't have to seal them. I, I don't really seal my gelatos. I think that once it's it's dry, it sets, and then it doesn't really come off. I think if you were to saturate your album or get it wet, it, they might revive a little bit. But um, I, I haven't had any issues at all. I think they're really, really great. Shelly's birthday. Happy birthday, Shelly. So awesome. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to move on to the next phase. The next phase is going to be tying our, our ribbon. 
because this is important to do first and you'll see why in just a minute. Oh yeah, see that hole? It will show through. So I think I'm going to use, I'm going to use the solid for this because this part I can cover up with the back page. You'll see. You'll see, girls. When I tie my bows, I go really, really tight. Like, you know when you're tying a shoe? Um, people are, I notice when they tie a bow, they are really gentle with the ribbon and I'm, I'm not because I like to kind of get it tight and then I can kind of pull on it and, and, you know, play, you know, fiddle with it and get it just right. But if you get it nice and tight, then it's, it's going to behave a lot better for you. And I'm just using like an inch and a half black grow grain ribbon. And, um. This you can find in a lot of different craft stores or places. May Arts is my favorite ribbon brand. I just think they make beautiful stuff and uh, great variety. And um, I'm just a fat ribbon girl. So there you go. Now, one other thing I want to show you. Uh, Prima also has this beautiful teal colored cabochon lace, which is also from our Donna Downey collection. And it came in a variety of colors, and this happens to be the teal. And I thought this made a great base for the cover. So I'm just going to go ahead and wrap, wrap it around from the front to the back and just glue as I go. All right, here's my glue. Oh, I have to tell you guys a story. Um, on my way home from Canada, when we packed, well, when I left Canada, I packed up everything and kind of threw it all into bins and stuff. And my glue was in the same baggie as my distressor. And it seeped out. And my distressor is now dead. So I have to bury it. Okay, so I centered it so that there's like little, three little peaks. And then I'm just going to go to the other side. I'm using Fabri-Tac glue. It's by Beacon. And Fabri-Tac is wonderful to use for this kind of project because it's the kind of glue that will put down your embellishments onto, you know, um, a fabric, so to speak, surface. So it really works good. I use it on paper. I use it for everything. And my stuff never comes off. Some people prefer Helmar 450. And that works great, too, if you have that. All right. So, so far looking good. Now, the key to this album. Remember those note cards I told you about? And I put back-to-back. Uh, -back. All right. And what this is basically going to do is it's going to be a little platform up here. I'm going to have it sticking up off the top of the album cover so that I can start gluing flowers and uh, leaves down to build up the top of my flower pot because you want that base. And on the other side, you see why I had to put the ribbon down first because this is going to cover part of it. Okay. So. I'll show you on this album here what I'm talking about. So there it is. It's just kind of sticking up at the top of the canvas, but you don't even notice. And you don't see it on the front either because it's covered with flowers. So that's the main idea. That's the trick. Okay. And make sure you don't cover your hole. Covering hole, you don't want to do that. Okay. So far, so good. All right. I'm going to go ahead and do this <clears throat> and just have it off to the side and just have it peeking out the top and the front. Let's see here. This is, I'm just kind of sliding it around and finagling it and make sure I give myself plenty of space. Yeah, I think this, I think, I think that'll work. So about like that. Okay. And this glue dries really fast, so I don't have to worry. So again, two note cards glued back to back, which I had done ahead of time. And if you're just joining, I'll show you. The note cards are right here. And you're just going to pull out two of them that are exactly alike, like this. And the sides are blank. And you're just going to glue them together like this so that you have it on both sides. I guess you don't really need to worry about it on the one side because we're covering it with flowers. However, with two of them glued together, it's a lot more sturdy. So it's sturdier, sturdier to hold your bulk of flowers. You're going to glue to it right here. I hope that makes sense. If it does not, I'm sorry. Okay. Now what I'm also going to do, start getting out some of my flowers 
And um, tonight I'm using these Grove branches by Prima and um, Grove Gray 553708. And you get two in a pack. And they are hand stitched little canvas vines. And they're on wire, so you can bend them around. And they're stuck inside the package. Okay, so I'm going to end up using both of these, and they're really pretty, and I love the black. So what I did is I took some peeled paint distress stain, and the distress stain is ink in a bottle, fluid ink in a bottle, with a little applicator. And when I touch down, it's going to just kind of put some color on there. Now, I know it doesn't look great right now, but trust me on this. I know I've got the applicator there, but I'll do that. You can spray your leaves too if you prefer. I'm going to go with the baby wipes and move that color around a little bit. There we go. Because these are kind of canvas, so it also helps maybe even to just kind of mist them just to prime them up so that they'll take the color. All right. So, and this does come out fast sometimes. So, when you're dabbing it down, every time you press down, um, there's a little valve inside the applicator that will release the ink and then it will it will come out like gangbusters. Okay. And those look a little dark so I'm just going to take my baby wipe and just kind of dab some of it off. There we go. And they're colored a pretty green. Now, I am going to do both sides because when you put this on the cover and you flip it over to the other side, you're going to see the backs of some of the stuff. Okay. So we do want to make sure that both sides are colored because you will see it. These kind of stick out a little bit. All right. All right, I know I'm being kind of quiet right now, huh? I'm concentrating on my coloring. So yeah, I did bring my um, project with me so that you can see it. Uh, for National Scrapbook Day, I'm going to show it to you. And I think I'm going to make my project into a two-part class because, you know, there's an awful lot to do and, you know, not a ton of time. But um, for National Scrapbook Day, I'm going to do the cover of the album. And then in June, um, I'm going to hold another class where we can do a few of the pages inside and make it look really pretty. So I'm just kind of warning you about that, and I'll show, show you the book when I get a chance. Okay, got to clean up the green here. So that was pretty easy and not a lot of spray mess or anything like that. And when these dry, they'll dry a little bit lighter. I'm just going to click, click that. What's great about these two is that you can cut them apart and use them into pieces. So you don't have to use the whole thing. And if they're a little, still a little too dark, you can go back with your baby wet. And one with a little bit of color, be a little bit come off. So, no worries. Now, I could have gone and used a gelato for these, but with the gelato, with like scraping the color onto it, because these are like fabric leaves. I don't know if you guys can see, um, they're, they're frayed at the ends. And if you're pressing down and putting a lot of pressure on to add color, they are going to fray more, and you may not want that. So the ink you're adding to it is perfect. That's all you need to do. And like I said, get out your sprays, your misters. You can do that too. All right, that's done. Now, another cool little technique. Um, I'm going to use these Sopranos. Sopranos came out on stems. All right, so you can keep the stems on and bend them and put them any way that you like, but you don't have to. And a cool little trick I have with these is I am going to use the gelatos to kind of two-tone them a little bit. Does that make sense? Now that you can see that they're all kind of, um, you can pull them apart and just make them kind of really fluff out, just like that. 
All right, so they do look compressed and not, I don't know, I think they look way prettier once you take them out of the package and you start playing with them. Um, you can also mist them very lightly with water and that will have, help them open up a little bit too. So you, you don't need to manipulate too much. So again, these are Sopranos, 561666, uh, showing you the packaging, that's great. And um, these little pink flowers are just so fun. So open them up. I'm going to take a little bit of that red gelato and you're going to add it to your craft mat. Just like this. Just make a little pile. Give a little squirty squirt of water. And then just grab a paintbrush and pick up some of that color. And you can start adding a little bit of the that red to the, the leaves. And actually it helps if maybe you just miss the flowers just a little bit. Don't oversaturate the flowers because um, that doesn't work as good. Does anybody have any questions? I haven't even really been looking at the chat too much, but um, I know Sharon's doing a good job of taking care of you guys and probably answering any questions you may have. So again, just adding, it's interesting to add a little bit of color. Let's see if I can get my light on that. It's interesting to add just a little bit of color to tone down that bright pink a little bit. Can you tell? It's very subtle and it almost adds like an ombre look. So you go from really bright pink um, like it is here to like a little bit of a deeper color. That's another cool little trick that I like to do with with some of my flowers. So I'm just going to do a few more just to get them going here for the cover. And you don't have to go too crazy. You're just shading and adding a little bit of something something. All right. All right, and that paintbrush really will spread it around a little bit. Just a fun little trick. You know, you always think of adding color to white flowers or cream colored flowers, but try adding some color to, you know, your colored flowers and you're going to get a really interesting look. And what I find with the gelatos is that it spreads really nicely out of the petals. And what's great about Prima Flowers is that they can take it too. <clears throat> Steph. I see Steph Miller on. She is so fun. She's such a great cheerleader. Well, I see a lot of my friends on, but I see Steph's in capitals and ex exclamations. You thought I was in Canada? No. I'm actually in Syracuse, New York. So I'm an upstate New York resident. Um, about, it takes me about four and a half to five hours to get to uh, the city if I were to drive down. Depending on traffic, of course. And um, my brother used to live there, and I don't need to go there as much these days. I would go down. Well, I do need to go down there, actually. That's not true. Everybody needs to go to New York once in a while and shop and just do some fun things and just hang out and walk the streets and, you know, do whatever you want to do. Eat some good food. All right. So that's pretty good. So I've got those going pretty well. So, you know, pink versus red, just a little bit of color. Clean that up a little bit. My flowers go flying. All right, back to our flower collage. Now, I, you guys know, I always like to start with my largest flower first. And um, with these, these are called poppies and peonies in teal. And they're kind of like a crepe paper flower. And they're from the Downa Downy collection as well. So they have really fun little petals. And I love the black in the centers of the flowers. They're really fun. So I'm going to start out with probably one that's a little bit bigger, or, you know, and not the biggest. There's three in a pack. So I'm probably going to start with, well, I'll start with this one. Yeah. And I'm just going to start building. Now, 
The leaves I, I am going to add in last. I did just grab like kind of like a variety of like, you know, green leaves and um, the vines and everything. You'll see as I tuck them in. I've also got, these are rosarian flowers and they're called Salentium. And in this pack, you get 36 flowers that match rosarian. And I love the mix. You get the teals, the aquas, the reds, the black, and like a nice little cream color as well. So these are great for tucking in. And so I'm going to just kind of put some on my mat here. And then I also have some innocence flowers. You can see I cut this pack in half. <laughs> and these are from our Innocence 2 collection. And it's, um, oh gosh, I think it's 545994, I want to say. Um, but any of our Innocence flowers will work. And, they're, and we get we have like a huge variety of them, you know, to choose from and color and play with. Um, some of them come with this little green back, too. And if you don't like those, you can just peel them right off. Like, you don't have to keep those on. They come off really easily. Because sometimes I don't like them. So I just take them off. Nothing against the flower or anything like that. But, you know, I just don't want them on there. So I took those off. Okay, so I've got my first flower down. And now I can start adding others. Here's the little pink flowers that I... I'm just adding a little bit of the Fabri-Tac glue around. And maybe a white one. Now, with this glue too, which is awesome, is that you can move things around when it's still a little bit wet. So if you were wanted to fuss around with this and kind of arrange them the way that you like, it's not a problem. Okay. I may even uh oh, get back on there. I may even put one of these under here. I think yeah, just kind of behind the ribbon a little bit. This is the other. This is the small one. Everybody doing good? Looking good? All right. Just clicking on my screen so it doesn't go black on me like it always does. So it's it's really not looking like too too much, but you're kind. You can kind of get an idea. You're just going to start building these up and around. I always like to start with the largest, as you know, move down to the medium, and then uh, tuck my little my little ones in around it. And just be careful when you're adding glue to the back. And what you're going to see, um, just make sure that you're actually gluing it onto uh, part of the surface that's sticking up. Also, that's very important. All right. I also, because I, I really don't want this this arrangement to take up half of my cover either. I just kind of want to make a nice little grouping at the top to make it look like a, f a pot full of, of fun flowers. All right. My pink flowers are still kind of wet a little bit, but that's okay. All right. And then with these little Salentian flowers, what's cool is you can kind of curl these up a little bit and make them into like a little flower bud. And you can just put a little bit of glue at that little bottom crease and hold them like that and just kind of tuck them in as is. So they add a little bit of dimension and a little bit of interest. All right, some of the little black ones. So you have all kinds of different color choices. Yes, I'm using Gelatos by Faber-Castell. Gelatos are like a little paint stick, but it's not really paint. It's it's kind of like a waxy um, art medium. And I hate to say, even say waxy, but that's what it reminds me of. Kind of like a lipstick or a chapstick. And they're wonderful um, for coloring um, multiple surfaces, such as canvas and paper and flowers. Oh no, it's the glue is making everything come off. So now we're just folding our little flowers, crunching them up just a little bit, adding glue at that very bottom. There we go. And you don't really need to, to wet it down. So there, I'll hold it up so you guys can kind of see. So 
See how I just kind of tuck those in and around. My bow is kind of big and obnoxious, but that's okay. All right. So the flowers are really looking good, and I can even add a couple more up here because I still have a little bit of a ledge up here to put more. I can just keep going. You guys know it's hard to stop. Just keep adding flowers forever. <clears throat> All right. So now it's time to add some of our branches that we colored. And what I did is I actually cut one into two parts. So I'm going to cut right up the middle here. Okay, so I have two separate pieces. And I can cut off this long piece on the end and use it for something else, if I want to. Yes, I'm making a flower pot album for any of those, uh, for any of you guys just tuning in and wanting to see what we're doing. So I think what I'm going to do is add this one up here on top. And I'm going to kind of slide it in underneath my flowers very gently. Try to, well, I think that's a little too long, so I'm going to give it a little haircut. There we go. So I've got some coming up up here. I've got another one here. And if you guys wanted to strengthen the, the vine a little bit later on, because they are a little bit easy to bend, um, what I would recommend doing is probably adding like a little bit of glue to each vine stem, and that will give it a little extra support and um, kind of, you know, steady it. So now you can see it's really kind of coming along together, right? And on the other side, so far, it is looking good. Like, I don't see anything terrible sticking out yet. <laughs> That's the one thing about something like this. When you see the other side, you have to be mindful of what's showing, right? All right. So now I'm going to take a variety of green leaves that I have. These are just some Prima leaves that I've collected over time. And I'm going to stick a couple of the bigger ones in here and then a couple of the smaller ones. So when I put the glue on, I'm just going to put it on the very bottom portion of the leaf. And I think what I want to do is add one right up here. So you only want to add a little glue to the bottom because the leaf is going to show through on the other side. Therefore, you'll see it. And you don't want to see glue, right? All right. And I'm just going to kind of tuck this one under here. So wherever you see space or an area that needs a little bit of something, just tuck it in there. Okay. All right. So far, so good. Uh, let's see. Take a medium sized leaf. And put it in right here. There. So now it's really starting to take shape with the leaves kind of poking out and of our vines and the vines we can kind of bend and move around a little bit. I don't know if you guys can see. Let's see. I don't know if you can. But I'll hold it up again for you. So all right. And now what I think I'm gonna do is add just a couple down here. At the very bottom. Why not? Just even though it's kind of being it's kind of hidden underneath that ribbon, you will see it on the other side. Just a little bit of it. sticking out ever so slightly. Let's see. Ah, yes. I can see it. That's not good. We don't want to see it. Well, we don't want to see glue anyway. You know what I might do? Let's put it like no. So just keep flipping it over. Keep checking. Make sure nothing's showing that you don't want to show. You know, just like when you get dressed. Yeah, all right. I can go crazy with the leaves. I don't need to go that crazy, but I kind of think they add a lot to a project and make it look really kind of full and pretty. So I think that's all I'm going to do for now. And let's see if I can come up with 
something to so that you can kind of see that top part there because it's disappearing into the background. All right. So, and then you can even go back if later on you notice like, hey, I would like a flower here. Once your leaves are added, then you can put flowers on top of the leaves a little bit too, overlapping and fill in even more if you prefer. All right, and I'm going to take a little bit of twine and just kind of put it under my ribbon. This literally is the hardest part, this little arrangement here. So everything else about this album will go really quickly and smoothly. I promise. Okay, and I'm going to leave it just like that because what I'm going to take next is um, a, a wood button. Uh, Prima has wood buttons that match this collection, this Rosarian collection. So I think I'm going to pick the cute little teal one here. There's stuff everywhere. And I'm just going to thread the ends in through this button and make a bow. That's a little more than I have to You're probably wondering about the tag that you saw too. The tag, I'm going to kind of faux tie it on. Does that make sense? Faux tying is like uh, gluing the tag up underneath it, not really tying it on, but it looks like it is. Because I sometimes I think that's easier. All right, so I'll give that a little haircut, and I can even knot it again, but I'm not going to worry too much about it. So it's taking shape, and then I'm going to grab uh, just grab a tag punch if you have one, or you know maybe you even have like a little uh, little I don't know little uh, tags in your stash. And I'm just going to punch out from the leftover paper after I turn some of my journal cards out. And just pop that tag in and use my Rosarian tiny alphabets, which you get like, oh my gosh, 629 alphabets on this. Are you kidding me? No, you're not kidding. Pull this baby out. What I love about this alphabet is it also got words on it. So you get red, you get words, you get the teal, the black, and the cream that all match the line beautifully. And on my original one, I put grow. So I'm going to put grow just like this. And overlap a little bit. These are just perfect to add to any little project you have. They fit in all kinds of little crevices, little, you know, you can do dates and names and, you know, where you've been, all kinds of fun stuff like that. So it just says, grow. And I'm just going to add some glue to the very top of this and maybe underneath too. And I'm just going to ever so carefully tuck it in around my bow. I suppose it's a little big, you know, and I could go in, I, I thought that this, and I can just cut right along those journal lines too. Mm -hmm. There we go. Make it just a little bit skinnier. They like skinnier, right guys? Yes. There we go. So it's just got a little, a little, see, you didn't really need to punch a hole and fuss with like um, the, the string or anything like that. It just looks like it's in there. Oh my gosh, it's perfect. Okay. So that's it. The front cover is finished. I gotta do a little tidying up here because this is what this is when I start to lose stuff and then I have no idea where anything is. And then I can't find it and it's just a catastrophe. The stuff is everywhere. And I may even just let this set for a second and um, go to the back cover. And what I did is I cut out one of these journal cards, this tall one right here from the Rosarian Shim Shim board paper, which I've already cut out. So you guys don't have to sit there and watch me cut. And I'm just going to put that right onto the back cover. Make sure your hole's on the right side. And what I mean by right, I mean by correct. <laughs> That's exactly what I mean. OK. 
Okay. And on the other side, on the back side, all I need to do, I could even just add this flower. Oh, maybe. We'll see. All right, so that, oh, geez, that's done. Okay. And then here's the other side, which, again, I'm still going to let rest. And now I'm going to just show you some of the pages that are going to go inside. So I told you to, to um have two of these papers because I did use this actual one. I did use this twice and it does actually fit in here nicely as an extra page. So like you're making up your own little inclusion pages. And then I cut this one out too. And I cut out this really pretty black and pink polka dot from the Bacella paper, which is right here. And then I also cut out these little journal cards here ahead of time too because I thought that those would be fun. So we're going to start building our pages while we let our front cover dry. Now this little strip, um, it's really cute. I'm going to let it kind of dangle off the bottom. And I'm going to just cut a little banner into that. So I'm going to have the corners come together and kiss. I'm going to cut from those corners that come and just give it a haircut. Okay. And I may not even want this to come down too much. I may just want it to come down a little bit. So I can center it where I like. Yeah, and then I can just trim off the top here. Okay, and turn it over and see the other side's teal. Very pretty. And then this is a little guy I cut out and I'm going to put this right here. And I'm going to add it with, I'm going to put some foam tape on here. Just to have it pop up a little bit. These are um, foam tape pieces by um, Scrapbook Adhesives. I really like their foam tape a lot. So I wish I uh, pull these off. <clears throat> so, ah! And then of course I'm going to add a little extra glue to it because of course I don't trust anything. All right. My screen. It's trying to go to sleep on me. There we go. I'm just going to add that right here. All right. Perfect. Get rid of the garbage. And then I'm going to turn it over. And this side is going to be really. Oh, I got a little gelato on my, on my page. Oh, no. Oh, well. Came from somewhere. I'm going to pull these note cards out again. And choose another one. This one's kind of pretty. Has like kind of a scallop border around it with a little bit of that lacy thing going on. I'm just gonna simply add that right to the back. So it's gonna be like in the center of the back side of the page. Voila! Pretty cool. It didn't matter which end, you know, you put it on. It's 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 whatever you like. Whatever note card you like. Okay, so that's finished. And then we are going to do... Uh, oh, here are the two note cards that I pasted back to back. So that's another page too. Pretty easy. And what I'd like to do is take some of my twine. I like to tie it around the page now. So what I do is I just hold it in place a couple times. Make a little bow. And you know, you can use black seam binding for this too, because it's nice and thin and fluffy and pretty. So if you like adding the twine or the black ribbon to the inside pages, that's okay too. I just love that Prima makes all these different kind of fun products and you know, you can use them in so many different ways and for so many different things. And we've, we've just made ourselves a really easy little page to go inside our book. All right. And let's see. I cut another one of these out too, just like I did for the other. And this time, I am going to take some of my black seam binding and I'm going to wrap it around this too, make a pretty bow. I think the black looks really, really pretty on this line. It really anchors it and tones down some of the you know, the brighter colors just a little bit. I don't know, or makes them actually look better. I, I don't know what I'm talking about, but I 
but it looks good. That's what I'm trying to say. I just really love it. Okay, so I've got my little bow here, and I'm going to scooch it off to the side. And here's the other little label that I cut out, and I think what I'd like to do is kind of hang it off the edge just ever so slightly, again with some foam tape. All right, foam tape, which I, you know what we should have, you know what someone should make is a foam tape dispenser. So we don't have to stick them down with our fingers and and deal with this. It just We can just take a tape runner and put them down. Wouldn't that be good? I come up with a lot of great ideas on this show. All right. So it's just going to hang off a little bit, and you don't see the foam tape on the other side. Awesome. Just leave that little thing there. Yeah. So there's another page done. The other side, we can do another little note card, just like we did on the other. Let's see, which one do I want to use now? Ooh, gosh, this one's really bright. Woo! I don't think I'm going to use that one. I like it, but I don't think I'm going to use it. I actually might use this one again. I think that that's really pretty. I'm just speaking in code to my mother. She's here hanging out with us tonight. Okay. So just securing that right down. So these little pages are coming together so easily. So it makes me happy. So now I have, I have three pages. I think I can put this one down. You can kind of move them around and rearrange them the way that you like. I don't even really think I need this second one. But it's something I can add later if I, if I choose to. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just get my holes before I put any bulk on this one. I'm going to use this as a little template. Okay, I'm going to center it so I know exactly how I want it to be. And make a little mark. So I know where to punch that one. Oh, let's see. This one. Just like this. So kind of arrange it where you know it's going to... Like I have to have it over that hole a little bit. So this one's going to be off to the side just a little bit. And that does not bother me one bit. If it bothers you, you can add it to a bigger piece. So far, so good. Is everybody okay? Is Sharon being naughty or she's she behaving? I can't tell. I've really been busy here crafting and not. I apologize. You know, and another thing I wanted to tell you guys about too was Art Venture. Have you heard about that? Uh, Prima is doing their second Art Venture. Um, they've got it scheduled for January 8th and 9th in Anaheim. So it's going to be at the same time as CHA, or just before CHA, I should say. So if you want to, if you were going to go to CHA, you can come a couple days ahead of time and um, take some awesome classes with our very talented group of instructors. And you are going to get just spoiled rotten with lots of Prima. The goodie bags are going to be amazing. The giveaways, the classes too. There's going to be Anna Dabrowska and Steph Miller. She's on tonight. I know she's going to be teaching. Uh, Frank and Jamie and uh, Lemore. Lemore. I, should, I always want to call her Lemore, and it's Lemore. Forgive me. Uh, just a great group. Oh, and Natalie Kalbach. I cannot forget Natalie. She's from Germany, and she's amazing too. Great mixed media artist. So if you get a chance, um, you know, we have a site that where you can register. We've been posting it on our Facebook fan page, so it's it's there. And you can just click online to uh, register and see what the details are and see if that's something you'd be interested in doing because I think you guys would have a ton of fun. Okay, so I punched the holes in my pages. Those are all set to go, and I'm going to just set this aside because I think the glue is pretty well set for this, and now I just want to kind of move on with this a little bit and I think the main thing we have to worry about now is what we do see and that's not a problem because if you have any kind of you know things going on that you don't like flowers cover everything right guys yes they do they really do okay where'd my stickers go? Oh, here they are. and you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take 
think I'm going to take the fabulous sticker. I could take friends. You could take any of these. There's friends, love, thanks, secret. And um, I'm going to put that right here. I'm going to add a little glue because I'm I am putting it there. It's really sticky, but um, when you're gluing down to kind of like a fabric kind of surface here, I think it's always a good idea just to add a little bit of glue, just like that. Okay, so fabulous, fabulous darling. <sighs> it's really kind of interesting to be scrapbooking upside down. But scrapbookers do it everywhere, upside down, anywhere you like. <laughs> we make do. Yes, we do. Okay, now I can start covering up some of the stuff here with the flowers. It's 1030, but if you give me your album, I won't complain. Okay, Sharon. How did that hour go by so stinking fast? Seriously. How did that happen, you guys? Oh, my goodness. I'm going to try to get through this in the next 15 minutes, I promise. And because um, we've already built the pages, we've got the covers done, and now it's just all about adding flowers and decorating. So uh, we can do that. Yes, we can. We can certainly do that. You know, another cool thing, too, is with these wood buttons. I know, I'm just switching. I've had coffee tonight. Can you tell? Yeah, I've had some coffee. Um, another cool thing that you can do with the buttons is add them into your flower, your little flower arrangements, too. So, like, you can take, oh, let's see, there's some cuties. Some These are wood buttons, and they are printed onto the wood. So it's not a sticker on wood. It's actually printed into the wood. And that's really cool. And you can tuck those in around your flowers and make them look really cute. So yeah, Sharon, I can give you one of these since um, I'll have two and I can give one to you and my mom. Oh, my mom's here. Oh, I didn't say that too loud. That's all right. Oh, <laughs> Steph is now texting me saying that she, Sharon said she could have the album. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, we have to go up to Canada and get that one from Emma too, which is probably not going to happen. Just saying, you guys. All right. For this, we don't really need a lot, do we? Because we have... A lot of stuff kind of showing around the edge, and that really uh, helps us accent this page already. So it's it's really easy. Well, I, I I'm still gonna add a couple of things. You guys don't care. Right? No, we don't care. I'm gonna add some more. Oh, look at look at I still have tons more in this pack. Yeah. I think I'm gonna add another cute little teal one. Oh. And this is perfect. I can add a little photo. There. Now I think I'm happy with it. So that's done. See how easy that is? We can put this away and move on. And all I'm going to be basically doing is going page by page and decorating. And this I think you guys could handle. I'll do a couple and then, you know, the rest uh, you can figure out. Hi, Mom. Hey. <laughs> She's here. You didn't hear me say anything, did you? Okay, good. Okay, don't tell her, you guys. Don't tell her. Oh, she's Now she's like, hmm, maybe I should listen. <laughs> so again, just adding some leaves, adding some pretties. My mom all of a sudden is very suspicious now. <laughs> she knows something's going on. All right. Another pink flower. Are these pink flowers, these sopranos, oh my gosh. You get, how many did you get in that pack? How many, how many of those pink flowers? There's 12 of these babies. You're going to have lots to put. You guys, I'm telling you, if you, if you got everything that I'm using tonight, you're going to have a, a lot of stuff to make more than one. That's for sure. 
you know, and you certainly don't need to put on as many flowers as I am. I just, you know, you know how we are. We're just flower crazy. But there, anybody that gets these is just totally going to love it. I totally appreciate that you made something like this. And it's so different and unusual. And we took a coffee cup and we made it into, uh, you know, a flower pot. And no one will ever know that it was a flower pot unless you tell them. And then I'll be mad. No, I'm just kidding. I would never be mad. Let's see. What else have I talked? What else can I talk about? I don't know. Prima's been busy. I can tell you that. I've been really busy. Everything's good. Oh, I've got glue on my finger. Sorry, it's sticking to my seam binding. Tying a little bow over a bow. Hope that's okay. I think we need just a little bit of black on here. Oh, uh, June 1st, I'm going to be in Pittsburgh teaching for a sweet retreat. You guys all know Christina Byers on the chat. She is I scrap and she's from Pittsburgh area. So we're doing a little event and last I knew there were just a few spots left. So anybody on the East Coast that would like to come and join us, go to yourmemorieshere.com and check out her site and you'll see it says sweet retreat and that's where you'll find information. And you can come and hang out with me and um, Eileen Hall from Sizzix. Eileen is going to be making some adorable projects. She has she has some some really crafty things up her sleeves. I'm going to be uh, making a couple of Prima projects and your kits will be loaded. Just saying. If you guys have ever taken a class with me, just know that your kit will be loaded. Okay? That's all I'm going to say. I don't have to say any more. You can think about it. Chat away about it. Talk amongst yourselves. You're always welcome to email me if you have questions. Um, I do try to answer every single email I get and um, respond and chat with you guys because that's my thing. So see, I've just been working away here adding flowers and leaves. That's it. That's all I've done. And I've got this cute little ribbon now and twine. And it's just coming together like crazy. All right, one more, one more. And then we'll put it together and we will be pretty much done. Okay. All right. So you got these little flat flowers here. Put them in here. Come and let it come together good. So, um, yeah else can I talk about? I don't know. I'm, you know, I, I'm excited for summer to come, but I'm, I'm also, um, it's, I, it's sad because I don't get to craft as much as I normally do in the summer because we're always traveling or busy and working and all that stuff. Um, but I am going to make an effort this summer to craft. I've decided I'm going to just Get out my glass of wine, get my glass of wine, listen to some music, and sit at my table at night on those warm nights and craft. Because I, I don't like doing that. Did you see I just clipped that, that second vine that I colored? I just clipped that baby right off, and I'm going to tuck this stem right in here. Have it kind of coming up the side. And I can still see some of the wire, so I can even add just one more little nugget of a flower just like this and cover that stem and crunch them up and stick them in there. There. Done. And you can even add, there's nothing wrong with adding leaves either to the to the already beautiful arrangement you got. You don't have to, but you can. Okay. Um, I have a book ring here. Uh, the albums do come with book rings. They only come with one. The coffee cup album, it comes with one. So, you know, if you're going to make a couple, make sure you have a couple of rings to spare to put it together. And I'm just going to start looping this through. Just like this. Just think. Oh, I decorated the back of that page. That's okay. It's all right. It's all good. Yeah, you don't have to decorate both sides of the pages if you want, the front and the back. I think you'll have enough bulk if you just do one side. Um, 
you know, it's not really necessary. And you can leave one side uh, with flowers on it, okay, and journaling or photo, and then just do a photo or journaling. I don't know. It's up to you, but there's, you don't really need to. Um, and I'm just going to add, uh, I guess I'm not going to add anything right now. I'm just going to call it done. So with all these guys lined up inside, that is your book. Like I said, fuss with it, move your leaves around, um, add more. I mean, you saw how quick this came together. I think that this is something you could definitely do. This could even be um, Christmas. I mean, you know, just because it's Christmas doesn't mean you have to give a Christmas album. You could give something that they can enjoy all year round with, you know, their family photos or um, yeah, whatever they want, whatever, whatever they want to use it for. You know, maybe they just want to put photos of their gardens in here, you know, their flowers or, you know, maybe friends with their flowers. I don't know. So that's it. And it was really inexpensive to make. And journal note cards and all that jazz. Sound good? Yes. All right. And um, before I before I go up, I'll show you guys my National Scrapbook Day um, album. So this is an art journal that uh, I'm going to be making on Saturday. And like I said, we're probably going to just get through the cover. I probably have... Oh, no. Uh, Sharon, the answer is no. Um, I'll talk about that in a second. Um, here's the cover of our of my album, and there's probably about ten different techniques I have to share on this cover alone. So we'll get through the cover and all the fun techniques on Saturday, and then um, in June I'll may I'll develop a second class, and then we'll work on some pages inside to get you started on your journal. And this doesn't have to be a journal. This could be an album. This could be with photos. It could be whatever you want. You could make it into whatever you like. And I actually used a photo on the cover. I used some canvas letters and um, all kinds of techniques. And this is Anna Dabrowska's um, journal, craft journal from um, her Sunrise Sunset collection. Ah, uh, thanks you guys. You think you should get this, Emma? Oh gosh. You, you already, you have a store full of carry projects, don't you? <laughs> so, I, no, maybe not. Maybe I took them all home last time. So, I'm going to pan up here. Oh, my face is looking a little weird from the light. So, I hope you enjoyed the class. You learned some techniques. We had fun. Uh, I know I went over my time just a little bit, but um, I hope it was worth it. You know, we actually got through that whole album. And um, now you have an idea for, for anything. And, you know, on our, we record all of our shows. And you guys are welcome to come back and watch anytime you want, as you know. I also upload to our Prima's YouTube channel, which is My Prima Place. And if you just search My Prima Place on YouTube, all of our Ustream videos also uh, are uploaded there. So you can, if you prefer to watch on YouTube, you, you can do that. I also encourage you to share with your friends and say, hey guys, you know, I saw this class. This might be a fun idea to do. You know, I, you know, I love that. So, um, What's, I know. I don't know what Sharon's saying. I know, too. I think she was texting with Jamie or something. So anyway, uh, oh, and one other thing I want to announce. We're, we are changing our prize giveaways uh, on the shows. I know we normally do a chat winner prize. And um, what's happening is that we're just becoming so overwhelmed with things at the office that we're not able to keep up with our volume of prizes and things going out, which is not a, usually a big deal. But what I think we're going to do from now on is um, if anybody is on our Facebook group page, uh, on, it's called Live with Prima Facebook group, or even on our Prima fan page, Prima Marketing Flowers, I'm going to announce a challenge every month. And um, it's going to be based off one of the Live with Prima classes. And you guys are all eligible to participate. It doesn't matter where you live in the world, uh, international, domestic, Canada, wherever. And we're going to have you participate in these challenges, and we're going to choose uh, winners from the challenges and send prizes out that way. Um, I hope that that's okay. I, um, I know you guys have always been very gracious, and, and I love giving away prizes. Uh, but for now, we're going to just change it up and see how that works because, you know, we want to we wanna see what you create, too. We want to see how we, 
you know, inspire you and, um, you know, kind of get you motivated to actually do that. Because I think sometimes we see something and we say, oh, I'll do that. But then do we? You know, sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. Yeah. And, you know, I got to say in the shows this past week that I've been watching with Steph and Frank and Jamie, they've inspired me to try some new things that I hadn't tried before. And I did. I went out and I bought stuff. So. <laughs> I did. They're enablers. All of them. Love a challenge and you never do it. Emma, you got to do it. Oh, Frank's on. Hey, Frank. So thank you so much for joining me tonight and for always supporting us and being so amazing. Um, we can't tell you how much we appreciate it. Me and the whole team of instructors, we just love you guys. We like to hear from you. You know, we are also open to new ideas and new show ideas and what you'd like to see. You know, feel free to message any one of us or comment on the Facebook group page and let us know. And uh, we will, we will, uh, we will do that. You know, we love it because that's what you guys are the ones we want to make happy. So tell us what you want and we'll do it. All right. Well, I'm going to sign off and say good night. And uh, Saturday, all day, starting at 9 a.m. Eastern Time, Sharon's kicking off the Live with Prima Marathon on National Scrapbook Day. And we hope to see you guys there. And there will be prizes, giveaways, blog hop too. So you want to check into the Prima blog and um, comment and see all the gorgeous work that everybody's doing and uh, get a chance to win some prizes there too, okay? So um, so we will be giving away prizes on the Live with Prima shows, uh, a few of them on Saturday, just so you know, so that hasn't that's not going to change, uh, but just for our regular shows. So thank you so much. You want messy boy? Yeah, Sharon's doing messy boy pages. <laughs> Okay, so tune in here on the channel, and I'll see you guys on Saturday. I'll be there with you all day. All right, take care. Thanks for coming.